what would you say if I told you you didn't know the full story of Daryl Dixon? That there's a big part of it you still don't know. And even if you are up to date with the main show and have watched every single episode and every single second of a scene with Daryl Dixon, that there's still a vital part to his story that to this day you don't know about. On the 19th of March 2013, a game called The Walking Dead Survival Instinct was released. There was so much excitement and hype around this game, it was the first to attempt a game set in the Walking Dead TV universe, and where you actually play as a main character from the show with a story that's canon to it. Norman Reedus and Michael Rooker, the actors behind Daryl and Merle Dixon, even got behind the game themselves and hyped it up that much more. But if it's canon and so important to Daryl's story, then why am I saying you probably haven't heard of it? Well, with how anticipated this game was when it actually came out, people weren't happy with it. It was heavily slammed by critics and received an overall bad score. But it's because of how unheard of this game has become that people are missing out on such an important and vital story. This is the official story of what happened to Daryl before he met the group in Atlanta and made his first appearance in the show. In this one video, I will break down and explain the entire story of The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. I played it so that you didn't have to. This is Daryl Dixon's backstory. this way. You see it? Dixon, it comes at me. You watch where you shoot that thing, okay? Survival Instinct starts with a character called Jess Collins addressing who we're playing as, as Dixon. We're following a trail trying to track a deer. I see some blood. Is there blood always this black? There's blood up ahead. He's signaling. Cut through the trees to see what he wants. We then come across a character called Buck, a hunter who's joined Jess and Dixon for their hunt in the creek. Uh, I didn't crouch down, so I might have made too much noise. Best you crouch to keep quiet. We get close to the deer, but something scares it. And yes, I did shoot the deer. I just don't know why no one liked this game. After listening closely, we realize that the thing that scared the deer is a shot from where we just were. It's Buck. He's screaming in pain. We need to return to help him. Once I got to where Buck was, I slowly realised what was about to happen. This wasn't your typical happy ending walking dead scene. And it wasn't just Buck that was about to die. Regardless of what I did or how I played, the game was clearly tailoring its own event. What in the hell, Dixon? Ah, oh, Dixon, oh, no, man. Help me. Daryl, you okay? Dad? Oh, Dad, no. We can. Well, we could. Daryl, he's too busted up. Nothing can be done now except ease his suffering. We were playing as Daryl's dad. This is what happened to him. Sorry, brother. In The Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 11, we saw the death of Dale. He had been ripped open by a walker, and someone from the group had to put him down. Rick struggled to do it, so Daryl took his gun from him and did it himself. And the last thing that Daryl ever said to Dale before putting him down and ending his suffering 
was Sorry, brother. the exact words his friend Jess used to put his dad down. Sorry, brother. Daryl had seen this happen before, and not just anyone, his own dad. So that already adds more meaning to what we already knew about the show. Daryl ended Dale's suffering just like Jess did to his dad. Sorry, brother. Just an hour after Daryl's dad dies, we're back at the cabin where him and Jess are staying at, and Daryl is angry because Merle wasn't here. One of the many big interesting things about this game is how much more bad we see Merle do, and how much that he's the reason behind a lot of bad stuff that happens to Daryl. Daryl goes into the other room to greet Jess. Remember, just before he shot Daryl's dad, he was bitten too and he is currently turning. This is at the very beginning of the apocalypse. Daryl has absolutely no clue about what's going on and no knowledge about the Walker virus, which is a really cool thing to see that you'd only find in this game. Daryl, come here. We gotta work up a plan. Have you ever seen anything like that? If you told me about it, I'd call you a liar. Listen, there's more of them coming. We gotta go. Yeah, the only thing we gotta do is kill every last one of them. Daryl, I know you're upset, but just listen. That sounds like a whole lot of them. We need to go now. Gather up as much as you can and meet me at the truck. Let's go then. Daryl, remember what we learned about him. Head trauma. Attack the brain. Remember, the only thing we know that kills him. Come on, people. What the hell? It's gotta be the brain. Did y'all know nothing? Another thing that Daryl found out with Jess. The only thing we know that kills him. And be quiet, sneaking out the back door. Don't let him see you. We need to sneak out of the cabin and get to the car. After some dithering that I want to talk about, we hear some shots in the background and find a rifle for ourselves. Some ammo and some fuel for the car. As we approach the car, Jess is in it, bibbing the horn, shooting and being loud because he's a twat. This forced me to do some quick scoping because, you know, I should be in phase. You saw the deer shot at the beginning. Yeah, I'm a bit like Morgan, really, you know, I can't die. Fuck. Get him, Little quick scope there. Not a damn thing. My phone ain't working either. Hey, about your dad? I don't know what to say about it. Then don't. Leave it be. We gotta tell Merle what happened. Yeah, I suppose we do. We ought to warn people first. What? Go to the cops? Please. We gotta go get Merle. Merle, he's... Well, he's just not right. What you say to me, old man? Merle's ten times the man you are. All right, all right. Just seems you boys turn hay into shit when you're together. No driving through that. We're on foot from here. Ah, boy. Bet them psychos came here, too. Yeah, maybe. Town circled their wagons, you see. Looks like a DMZ. If there's any gas, it'll be at Lucky's. Daryl has to go to Lucky's to get gas for the vehicle. This town has been ruined, and this is Daryl's first experience with a town that has been affected by the apocalypse. Shit. Now, throughout this game, Daryl will come across survivors. There are 16 in total, and if you save all 16 and bring them with you throughout the game, and have them at the very end, you get an achievement. In my playthrough, I was just playing for the story. The survivors that aren't mandatory don't affect the story in any way, so I didn't get them. After you make it to an alleyway, Daryl hears a voice call him from above. Hey, come on up here and talk a minute. Use the ladder near the dumpster. Hey man, up here. Not nice set up. Jimmy Blake, last standing officer of the Sedalia SO. Go for you. There's cycles all over this place, too. The biters? Yeah, they're everywhere, man. Where have you been? Up in the hills, hunting. Didn't know nothing about them till the tour of our camp. Still don't. Uh huh. Let me bring you up to speed. More of them come every day. We help each other survive, or we don't. That's it. 
normal rules suspended for the foreseeable future. That applies to good guys and to, uh, hunters. 10-4? Yeah, I get it. But who's we? The kid holed up in the gas station and the deputy in the cell block. He's interesting. I want to do one last radio check before bugging out, though. Well, then do it. And the batteries went dead two days back. Can't find fresh ones. If you can, I'm happy to supply a little bird's eye coverage. I'm a hell of a shot. Batteries? Okay. I'll keep an eye out. I need gas, though. I think it's long gone, but the kid would know better than me. Daryl just met Deputy Jimmy Blake. He says he needs batteries to call the other officers, and Daryl says he'll get them, but he needs gas. And there's a kid that seems to know where we can get this gas. Sure enough, Daryl goes to the gas station, and that's where this kid is. Daryl meets Warren Bedford. Over here, man. Something you want? Huh? I ain't standing out here playing bait all day. You got a car? You need gas, right? I can get you gas. I'm Warren. Daryl, it's a truck. What happened here? The eaters happened. Me and my dad holed up here with Uncle Lester. The town held them off okay, until we lost all the cops. All but Blake. Uncle Lester? Lucky Les? Yeah, the same. He and Dad went out to see who was left. I don't think they're coming back. But Uncle Lester has the key to the generator cage. And that's how we get the gas pumps running again. Right. You get the keys and crank the Jenny. I use my codes to turn on the pumps, and we get out of here. Win-win. You're coming with me now? I'm not staying here, buddy. We got a deal? Daryl goes and finds dead Uncle Lester and gets the keys so that he can turn on the generator and get the gas. Hope you still got that Jenny key on you, Les. That's it. Big thanks. No, 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 no. Don't use that key yet. Come here first. Hey, you got it? Yep. All right, good deal. Uh, open the Ginny cage. Are uh, my dad and Uncle Lester behind you? Just get the pumps on, okay, Warren? Oh. Okay. It's all ready. Open the cage and hit the primer. Go. The noise from the generator draws in loads of walkers and Daryl has to run back to the truck, put the gas in, and go. And Jess, they fucking run. Obviously for these games they do speed it up a little bit. It's more of a fast shuffle than it is a run. And it's still accurate because earlier on in the apocalypse, as we've seen in season one, they were slightly faster. Daryl, get back over here! Man, what you think I'm doing, Jess? I stuck the damn truck! She ain't gonna make it. We gotta pull off, find a new ride. Don't much like the idea of stopping at night. It's too hard to see. Yeah, we ain't got a whole lot of choice. Can't be too careful until we know more about it. Yeah, that's true. Another cop. I'll handle this. As soon as we score new wheels, we're out. Yeah, I'm on it. I'll whistle if I turn anything up. Hi. You okay? I'm fine. A little tired, maybe. Been a long day. Jess is getting worse. They drive up to a cop car, and out comes a cop called Albert Lee. You picked a rough place to stop. Campground's a slaughterhouse. Yeah, I hear you. But my truck's done for. Yeah, I see that. Albert Lee, Pemberton Sheriff's Department. Daryl Dixon. You think you can give us a lift? Eh, gotta get them over to Memorial, if it's still open. So then can you set me up with one of these? Sorry, man. No keys. Tell you what, there was a ranger. Hartwell. He was driving back to his station. Looked like he had plenty of room. Here, take this. Wish I could do more for you. The police officer gives Daryl a double barrel shotgun, which excites me. I can't help but think there's a lot wrong with that. Officer Albert Lee says Daryl can go and find a ranger called Hartwell in his nearby station. But as we approach, the place is ridden with the walkers. Where is he? I don't see no ranger here, lady. I was just talking to him. Who is this? I'm Daryl, the guy you just scared the crap out of. Where are you? I'm at a motel in Pemberton. I'm... There was a deputy here, but they... 
Together, Elizabeth. Stay quiet. They can probably hear you. No, no! Ranger, come help me! Come help me, please! Lady! Elizabeth! There ain't no Ranger! Ranger Hartwell didn't make it. Scared me a twat. Walker's completely surrounds the cabin, and Daryl barely escapes. He gets back to the car to see Jess, and something's off about him. Hey Jess, don't worry about wiring it, I got the keys. Jess? Oh, Jess, no! And just like that, Jess's time ran out. I'm sure you've noticed that in the loading screens, we hear conversations between the characters in the vehicle. And it's really interesting because in this one, we hear someone preaching and declaring doomsday on the radio. Be afraid of the terror by night, go of the arrow that lies by day. Repent, repent, repent and be the foe of salvation. Enough of that shit. The next objective is to find Merle. Yeah, that place is lousy with eaters. Something's got him bowed up. Sounds like we've already found him. The first time we saw Merle in season one, this was what he was doing. And we're seeing right now, he did it before we even saw him on the show. Alright buddy, it's okay. We're gonna get through this. Daryl gets to a diner and after he clears it all out, he meets Anna Turner and Noah. Thanks, from both of us. He bit? Uh-uh, gunshot. Some crazy asshole is sniping at us. And car alarms. I dragged Noah in here, they followed. Who's us? You two? Got a whole team out there. Or did. We scavenged supplies for the local survivor camps. Their survivor camps? Um, yeah. The military supplies some of them with weapons, meds. There's a big one at Cherokee Hill Sawmill. We were doing pretty well until that psycho sniper showed up and brought a whole mob of fighters down on top of us. We got split up, pinned down, killed. I need to get my people together. One of my runners, Mia, is holed up in the theater across the street. Help her out and I'll make it worth your while. Trade you one of those. Lots of goodies in there, hillbilly. Just tell her Scout sent you. I'll think about it. We need to go and break into a movie theater and find Anna's friend, Mia. Hey! Mia! Get away from me, you asshole! I ain't the asshole you're worried about. Who are you then? I'm a different one. See? Not me. The scout asked me to come look in on you. You know Scout? She sent you? Yeah, she's across the street, in that diner. Oh, thank God. I thought the shooter... Every time I put my head out, he's all over me. I lost all my gear, so I'm pretty much trapped. The theater's locked up tight since they started loading corpses in there. Exit's blocked, and there's a bunch of them. There's a half ladder down. Clear the way and I can get out and back to Scout. Let's do it. Gotta get over to the police station and get my brother anyway. The police station? But that's where that killer is set up. You think your brother's even alive? Yeah, I got my suspicions. We get to a police station, the same one that Merle is shooting from. Merle! We clear it out and we see that the jail cells have blood all over them. They've been broken out of. This is where Merle was when the apocalypse started. He was in jail. Merle, his natural habitat. Merle, oh man, you crazy son of a bitch. Where did you get off to from here? Are we? No, no, no! You're never gonna take me back there! Oh, come on, Merle! It's me! Merle! What slower than impersonating a man's long lost baby brother? You're just trying to gain false entry! That's what you're doing! Damn it, Merle! I'm just gonna leave you here! Keep your pants on, sweetheart! I locked this place down pretty good! 
Them people lock me up for days in the dark with all them abominations. But look at who's just a little bit too smart for her. Bro, you're stir-fried from the sun and the booze and whatever else you've been into. Uh, I do feel a little warm now that you mention it. I sprang myself, see? Established my little sniper's nest right here. And then I commenced to send them soldiers a packing. I rang the alarms, calling in the abomination. Man, those aren't soldiers down there. Just some scavengers trying to help people out. They don't even know who you are. They're in uniform, ain't they? And they came to take me back to the hole. I'm not going anywhere but Jake's, and that's where you're gonna take me. Come on. Let's go, you ape. Guess I gotta lug your thick ass back across town. Man, you must be running over 106. My chair! Yeah, it'll be here when you come back. They both get in the truck, and the conversation you're about to hear is Daryl telling Merle that their dad is dead. Another big thing that you just wouldn't see if you hadn't seen this game. Merle, man, I gotta tell you something. Something happened, bro. I got it. Full bore, flesh eating apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah, but we were up at Jess's camp house when the, when the eaters came down on us. We never heard anything about them. They tore us up. Jess and me, we were the only ones to get out. Where's the old man? He was up at the camp house, too. He didn't make it, bro. He did? The old man's dead? You let the abominations get him? Did he turn into one? Did you let that happen, too? No, I, we gave him mercy. What did he say? What did he say? He said, uh, he said, tell Marlon I'm proud of him. <laughs> what do you really say? I need some methicillin, some penicillin. Better yet, make a mice. Well, you stay put. You just slow me down right now. <laughs> the hell I would. But I was thinking of kicking my feet up. So we've just arrived at a hospital for Mets, and you'd be really surprised at what I found in this hospital. This part of the game shows something I didn't think this game would do. Remember, this is 2013. In fact, the season 3 finale for the main show aired a few days before this game came out. So, very early days for The Walking Dead. Now, as I was walking through this hospital, I had a feeling like I was being watched. It was an eerie feeling, like I was about to come across something really big. Of course, the game's just done a really good job at making you feel like that. But this isn't something that the game really put a lot of focus on, on this part of the game. And knowing what this game had already showed us so far in this universe that the show hasn't, I knew that being in a hospital, we were going to come across something. But it's something that I knew I'd have to look for. This isn't something the game would push in my face. I was being given the opportunity to explore this hospital in the Walking Dead universe, and it excited me. Oh, you know I looked in every room. First of all, we come across Noah Cruz. He was the one that was shot with Anna Turner in the diner earlier. He mentioned some scary looking military. She brought you to the hospital after all, huh, Donna boy? Oh, Scout? She went to the morgue, got some medical tools. She said there were some mean looking military dudes, so look out, man. Hey, I need some antibiotics. You got some? Gauze and tongue depressors. Sorry. I'm gonna keep moving. Cool, man. Be safe, all right? It's also really interesting to hear Daryl swear in this. With the show, AMC have to replace minor swear words with even more minor swear words. And so you never hear Daryl say stuff like this. Some light would be nice. What do you see? What do you think I see? It's a fucking hospital. <laughs> now, you can open the doors and go in many of these rooms in the hospital, and sometimes the music would be suspenseful. You know, you'd hear a sound effect as soon as you enter it or open the door. It plays with your mind on whether there's going to be a walk on the other side of the door or not. But I just had a feeling I'd find more than that one of these times that I look in one of these rooms. Each time I opened one of these doors, the room behind it had more and more in it.
And that's when I found it. A patient table with the body of a woman on it. Next to it is one of the collectibles you can get for the achievements in the game. And the collectible itself are documents for experimentation. For subject M8520005. Just what did they do to this woman? What did she sign up for? She's a subject, but a subject to what? What experiments did they do? She's just dead on the table. There's pictures of her, scans of her brain. She said there were some mean looking military dudes, so look out. After searching the rest of the area, there's nothing like this. This was a collectible and there's a story behind it. This was an experiment that has just happened. The subject is dead. As we advance through the hospital, Daryl changes the channel on his walkie-talkie, and we hear the conversations of a doctor. What the hell are you doing? Change the channel, monkey. Candace, just wait. Candace, it isn't a function of the central nervous system, but of the peripheral. You have samples, a working serum. That's why I say, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, you don't have them. I will. Lieutenant Groves is searching with his men as we speak. Whatever it takes. Serums. Lieutenant Rhodes. This is the military. The military are trying to make a cure. And then once Daryl gets to one of the top floors, he comes across rooms filled with walkers. And while we run away, his walkie-talkie is relaying a soldier noting information about a person as if you were going to use them for an experiment. What the hell? Team one, in pursuit of white or mixed race female, 20s to 30s, light build, 5.4 to 5.7. Oh, shit. Check it out. So Daryl goes towards where he thinks these people are, and this is what he finds. Who are you? I'm looking for meds. Antibiotics, mostly. You got any you can spare? Yeah, shoot her. Shoot that bitch. What in the hell? These are desperate times. You need meds, and I need a very fresh sample. Don't listen to her. She's crazy, man. Let him go. So she's lured and locked up Noah, and wants to use him as a sample, trying to get him bit, and then tested. It's awfully similar to the CRM. Lieutenant Rose, I need your help. Please report to Lab 2B. Why are you doing this? Please stop it! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Woo! I owe you, dude. Big time! I gotta go find Scout. You do that. Where's that bitch doctor? She ran off while you were fighting! She knew what was good for her, then. Hey, I, I found these before they caught me. It's not much. Hmm. That might work. Yes, sir. I just cannot wait to see the look on their faces when we get to the clubhouse. They gonna do right by us tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, sure they will. The Savage Sons Motorcycle Club is a loving crew. Yeah, they sound it. Don't get your panties all in a bunch, son. Shit, you see that? Hundreds of them, like a damn walker convention. They're headed straight for the club. 
We gotta stop them or we'll never make it. I'll head left and circle back. You go right and then meet me in the middle. So what are we looking for? Anything that'll stop that parade of debtors reaching the bar. Daryl and Demurl are on the way to the Savage Sons Clubhouse, but there's a herd nearby. To stop the herd from getting close to the bar, Daryl and Demurl come up with their own little plan. Now, I won't show this in full, because it is more for the gameplay on this part, but this is a really cool little plan that they came up with, to set up fireworks to distract the walkers and make them turn the other way. I'm in the church. You gotta position the ordinance properly, or it's just gonna fizzle out. You got me? No kidding. All right, baby! Hand in room only! Light him up, boy! Gotta go! Not bad, but you better get back to the truck! Yes, sir. I've been looking forward to this every day for the last month. Yeah? So what's the surprise, Mar? What? Right. Wouldn't be a surprise now if I told you, right? It's gonna be nothing about to pull over. All right, all right. Just trying to do something nice is all. All right, I'm pulling over. I kept something of yours. It's back at the bar with my hog. What for? Same reason I kept this wristband that Mama gave me, I suppose. Stay here. What? Daryl doesn't stay here. We find our way to the clubhouse, and this is what we find. Carl! What the hell? Don't kill me, brother. I ain't your brother. It wasn't my idea to sell you out, I swear it. Oh, I believe you, Ash. You're too damn chicken shit to cross me. Now, why don't you tell me where the rest of the club's at? Out, man. Looking for stuff. Oh, damn it, Merle. This whole trip was just for your stash? Quit your belly aching, you're giving me a headache, son. Jess was right about you, you self son of a bitch. Ah, don't be that way. Look, I kept that crossbow of yours. Man, you just don't get it, do you? Uh-oh. Hey, Merle's here! Come on, grab all the shit! We gotta get to Merle before he can ride! Where's my blade? They took everything? Not only are we now seeing Merle's gang, but we're seeing how they fell. You got something of mine. I need to find Merle, have a little talk, get my gear back and then some. And on the way to find Merle, Daryl comes across Anna again. And you know, she's calling me a hillbilly while I'm trying to save her. Over here! He just starts randomly roasting there after he saved her. What a Saved your ass at the diner? Do I look like your bitch? <laughs> Not in that outfit. What? Oh, hell no. Wait, oh, come on. I was only teasing. Hey, where's that bag you promised me at the diner? We haven't even gone on a date. <sighs> what? Give a girl a ride and we'll talk. Let's go. Before I change my mind. You don't say a whole lot, do you? Nope. Right, so... I'm Anna Turner, but all my friends call me Scout. Look, about leaving the diner, I had to get my friend to a hospital. You got people depending on you, you need to push on. My dad's a sheriff, so I was helping with what I could. Scrounging supplies, helping people. So what happened? He made me promise to get to the evacuation at Palmetto Estates. Said he was pulling his deputies and would meet me there. That's the best plan I heard all week. Don't look like nobody's here. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Maybe somebody's holed up inside. I'll circle around. You want to try there? Yeah, either way. Sooner we wrap this, sooner we're back on the road. Hey, I see some movement on the horizon. Coming in pretty fast. Can you tell what it is? I can tell I don't like it. You probably want to get inside. What could she be talking about? How's that for timing? All right. What's your situation? I'm cool. On the roof, across from you. Oh, whoa. What? Are you looking outside? Helicopters. Hey, I wondered who that was breaking in. I'm Noah, remember? I lost Scout at the hospital. I was hoping to catch up to her here. Yeah, she's just outside. Wow, really? You two running together? For the time being, looks like. Okay, here they come. That what you wanted? Just right. Thanks. 
I want to talk to those guys, get some help from them. Well, you can't go out on the street, dude. Go through the stores. They're connected. Catch up to them at the end of the mall. You coming? I'm not that amped about talking to these guys. I'll catch you on the far side. And you sound like my brother. See ya. Oh, uh, hey man. I owe you from earlier. You in need of a talented scavenger? Hear that? Trainload of munitions dumped at the freight yard. What do you think now? Yeah, I think we're gonna make a stop. Scout, come in. Scout, you copy? Daddy, I'm here. Where are you? I'm... <coughs> Daddy, are you okay? Nice night, huh? I'm having second thoughts about this one. Hey, I'm gonna go check it out. If it looks dicey, I'll be right back. If it looks dicey? Hillbilly, you've been at this way too long. Oh. Fell on a damn walkie. There. Good as no. Scout. Hey, Scout. So they've just arrived at this train yard and Daryl's fallen on his walkie-talkie. He broke it so he can no longer talk to Anna through it. Just remember that. Here we go. Here you are. Jackpot. Spotted a lot one. Can you initiate rescue? Ah, negative. Dig up the swarm. Poor bastard. Oh, shit. Time to move, girl, Ann. Moral. Oh, what the hell? You ditched me, man. Get up and go. They're coming at your heart, son. Now, where are you? Hurry it up, I'm counting at least two Yeah, that's more like it. So Daryl's walkie-talkie was broke, but out of nowhere, Merle contacts him through it. Is Daryl even really hearing Merle's voice? Is he even there? This isn't the first time we've seen Daryl hallucinate Merle when he's in a time of danger. Try again, boy, but don't slow down. I'm waiting top five. Cut through that car in front of me. Right, stupid, right. There it is, man. That's the ramp you want. Yeah, Coach Merle would let you screw up, I reckon. Merle, son of a bitch. Man, I got a bone to pick with you. I saw you fall. Your head's bleeding. No, I'm okay. Chopper kicked up some shit is all. Is it Merle up here? No, just me. You wait, your brother, Merle? You talk to him down there? Yeah, on the walkie. He said... That walkie? It's broken. Must have happened when you fell. It doesn't even have batteries. But I... Let's go. We're about to miss the evacuation. No, Let's but... Let's go, Daryl. Seeing your father's a bad idea. Saying goodbye on the radio. It's the best thing to do. When I was seven, I wanted a dog in the worst way. But, uh, my dad has always had allergies real bad. One day, he came home with a brand new puppy and a grin ear to ear. Even though my dad hates needles, he got a shot every week for 14 years and never said one word. Daryl, I'm half the person he is. Mm, fuck off. See you around, hillbilly. One awful couple of people. Now we are that close to the ending where we are allegedly going to evacuate. We're going to an evacuation point. We've just now arrived at Sherwood to get that evacuation information so that we can evacuate. Now something that blew me away even further about this game that I didn't expect at all is that they'd show us Amy and Andrea's parents. This is what happened to them. The mother was bit, and the dad is just on the bed comforting her. But it's sad because they're likely both going to die either way. It's going to be all right. 
Oh, are you looking for the evacuation point? You're gonna have to come closer. Lost most of my hearing in the service. We came up here to try and find our daughters, Amy and Andrea, but my wife, well, you need to talk to Aiden. He's in charge of signaling the evac choppers. Know where the guy is? He and his wife live in the house across the way, but I don't know if he's there. Did Aiden send you? No. I'm looking for him, though. You need to find my husband, Aiden, so he can signal the helicopters and we can all get out of here. He went to the mechanic shop. Nothing's ever easy. Hey! Hey, you! Up here! So how do I get out of here? Okay, all right. You need to get a bag I dropped in the mechanic shop. It has smoke pots to signal the FEMA choppers. These things? Yeah, okay. You go back. Get my wife and Harrison. Once we light those smokers, we have 90 seconds to pick up. I'll update you on the radio. Let's light them up then. The sooner I'm out of here, the better. So we've got to go back to the town to save Aiden's wife and Harrison. Now Harrison is Terry Harrison, you know, Amy and Andrea's dad. But when we get back to the town, it's been completely swarmed by walkers. And the game makes you choose between saving Terry Harrison and his wife, or Aiden's wife. Now, my mindset is Aiden is the one in charge of calling this helicopter. So... But while we're clearing out the walkers, we hear on the walkie-talkie that Aiden gets taken by the military anyway. It's a forced rescue and they don't let him wait for us to come back. So I saved his silly wife for no reason. It's time to go to Atlanta. This is the final part of the game. Daryl makes a choice at the end of this that changes everything. As they approach Firesign Stadium, Daryl notices something isn't right. You're about to see everything go wrong very, very quickly. The biggest part of the show is what a mistake everyone made by going to the city. That's one of the first things that happen in the show, with Rick riding into Atlanta not knowing a thing about what he was about to face. But this is at the very beginning. What you didn't know until seeing this is that Daryl went there before all of that. The moment Atlanta actually fell, Daryl arrived. Wake up. This is it. Hmm. Are we there? Look! Firesign Stadium! That's where they're evacuating! This ain't right. Something ain't right. What? No! No! Daryl! Get to the gates! Damn it! I should have known! Oh, they got in. They got the soldiers, they got everybody! Evacuation procedures to continue the schedule. Please register at entry point A and be. Whoa, 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 what? It's still on? Please remain calm and orderly. If you think Rick had it hard by going in there after it had fallen, you haven't seen anything yet. This is Daryl going through hell the moment the city fell. Daryl needs to get to the evac points in the football field in time for when the helicopter has to leave. We're clear! We're clear! Is she loaded? Uh, we are good to go control. Dr. Candace Jenner is aboard and we are prepped to lift off. Roger and out, control. Wait! No! Ugh. You said run, you twat. And like usual, Daryl now has to defend the helicopter and keep everybody safe. There's literally thousands because it just come from a city. He's not Superman, and I'm not in esports. The game needs to give us a break. And just when things get overwhelming... Come on, damn you! Earl, am I not the most...
most magnificent sight to behold. Get on that cannon! You keep them off me, and keep them off that truck, you hear? Helicopter, there's plenty of room. Nah, I passed. This ain't a ride we want to take. Damn. Prepare for dust storm. Hang on, people. What the hell you think you're doing, huh? You dumb son of a bitch. The military doesn't give a shit about you no more. You could have been out of this mess forever. Lucky for you, I got an eagle eye. It's this one. Didn't you see the bite on that Whirlybird pilot? Hell, he was more than halfway turned already. I know I got your back. Yeah, no. Hell, I'm the only man you could ever count on. Did you see what just happened? Daryl was about to get on a helicopter that would have taken him away forever. It was his way out. But Merle stopped him. Think about all of the stuff that Daryl would have avoided if he had just got on that helicopter. Merle said that he could see a bite on the pilot. But I don't think he actually did. I think this is just another time he's been controlling of Daryl and put him in a much worse situation. From what we saw that the military were doing, it's very similar to the CRM. Now, I don't believe this was the CRM at the time it was made. Like I said, this was 2013 and it was being made in the years before that. I don't think back then the CRM would have been a cemented idea. But if this helicopter did arrive at a destination, I do think it would have been at the CRM or someplace similar. But this was Daryl's backstory. After his dad, Will Dixon, and friend Jess Collins died, Daryl met many survivors along the way. He made it to the Firesign Stadium in Atlanta, but the whole city fell. Daryl and Merle escaped, and the next time we see him... Easy way to say this, so I'll just say it. Who are you? Rick Grimes. Rick Grimes? So what did you think of Daryl Dixon's backstory? Back when Survival Instinct came out in 2013, it was big, a lot of people did play it, it was one of those popular games. But it's been so long and it got bad reviews, so it did just drift away, it's not one of those games where you say, oh do you remember Survival Instinct? Oh, no I don't because uh, I watched a review that said it was shit. It was the first game to take on the TV show and some of the characters in it, and people really held it to a high standard. When a game gets bad reviews and low scores, you don't tend to hear about its story. This game has drifted under the radar and a lot of people don't remember it or know about it at all. And I've wanted to make this video for a long time, since I started YouTube in 2019. I've wanted to really do this game justice. It's not The Last of Us, it's not some masterpiece, but this is some interesting story, it adds so much more to it. And among that, the game is really fun. If you're a fan of The Walking Dead, I highly recommend going back and playing this. I cut out a lot of the gameplay because we're just talking about the story. But it is really, really fun, and it is really good at giving you that Walking Dead feel. For example, there's some supply run levels that have nothing to do with the story, but you have to play them in order to get fuel and progress to the next part. And especially in those parts alone, 
it really feels like season one and season two. With this video, I think with so many people probably too young to even play the game when it came out, and some people not even being aware that it exists, I hope you've watched this video and learned something, all this extra story, and you might even want to go and experience it yourself. It really is worth plugging your PS3 in or your Xbox 360 in and getting this game for $10, £10. Now, I got it on PC because it was much easier for me to record and drag it into my editing software because it was the whole game. Getting it on PC was a lot more difficult, you would have to get a key for it, which costs a lot more than if you just played it on your old console, but it is worth it. Let me know what you think. Did you like this kind of video? What other games you want to see me play? Make sure you let me know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you press the like button, it will help me out and get this video seen by more people. In a few seconds, some videos are going to pop up on your screen, make sure you check them out too. And of course, make sure you subscribe, so that you are the first to see my videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.